So, yeah, he, he could have been legendary. I mean, if they ever reprint him, he probably will be. So here we go. Round four. Play first. Looks like this is some sort of a sapphire deck. Uh, this is not the hand we are looking for. Yeah, we have to draw again here. We only are running 23 shards in this deck. Other decks are running 24, by the way. We'll keep this. This isn't great, but it, it'll work for what we need it to do. So open up wild, 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 and then ruby. So a very slow hand. If he's he's sapphire, so this is probably one of those. Um, it's gonna be heavy counters, so we have to fight through some counters to get to th play some things. But if you can counter all the cards we play and all we do is top deck shards, then yeah, we're definitely in bad shape. Ooh, he's playing ruby. This is maybe that sapphire ruby. Oh, he's playing. Oh, he's playing. Um, never mind. He's playing uh, aggro. He's playing the uh, regular aggro thingy. Uh, we'll play this for wild. So we'll be siding in uh, whatever it's called. Uh, Alright, I don't feel too bad about this. No. Yeah, he's playing the, uh, the really quick aggro deck, though. Bot, sure. That's another thing that elves are really good for is blocking these little like one ones. Because they have the two back end and at least one front end. Really good for that too. Okay, so we have to play Trebudor here. If it gets killed, it gets killed. Um, we'll be able to play Crocosaur next turn no matter what. Yeah, because we can't play him this turn, so. It gets killed, it gets killed. It doesn't get killed, that's amazing, because then we'll eventually we'll get to Eye of Creation into something really big. If he swings in with a charge bot, I don't know, he may... I don't, I'm not sure what kind of trick he would have. I don't know, I don't see him swinging. Especially not with the ma uh, Mechanist. Yep, Construction Foreman gets his 3-3. Three, three. Swings for three, probably. This turn, just the three. Yep, and we'll Crocosaur that and probably his Machinist uh, next turn. Take three. And again, I'm in a situation where I don't even have to use my champion power to play the Crocosaur, which is pretty nice to be able to save that. Uh, a double Ageless. There you go, Crocosaur. We got Ageless to make a crazy go nuts eye of creation eventually. So I'll probably play Ageless next turn. Actually, next turn if we play Ageless and then if it stays in play, we can play Root Father in the following turn. Swing through with Crocosaur and then play the Root Father. He blocks with this thing and a couple other things. He'll have to block with his hole with the house basically to stop me. Yeah, he's just gonna chump block. That's fine. I'm okay with that. He has he can't counter here, so. Is that a flyer? Okay. still attack with his Electroid, but it doesn't matter. Can't even target my Root Father. So if he could bounce, it doesn't matter. So we'll 
play Trebidor in the second main phase and we'll have a crazy Eye of Creation in the following turn. And right now we could Eye for a decent amount, but I want to get four, four more resources up. Gonna want to block Root Father at least, so I'll probably chump block both of these guys, but at least Root Father. Yeah, chump blocks them both. It's another flyer. I'll play Ageless here. <laughs> No longer swing with the Electroid, which is good, so he just gets the four in the air. Unless he plays an artifact here, which he, he should be able to, or a dwarf. Yeah, so his guy comes back online, he can swing for three, four, five, six, seven. Interesting choice. I'm not sure why I did that. He's just going to swing for the four, that's fine. So I have creation for a ton here. Mm, double I have creation. <laughs> so we're going to look at basically most of the cards in our deck. Uh, ten cards, that seems pretty good. So, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and eat these guys. Eat those guys swing in for the house. It's a pretty ridiculous board state to have to deal with there. I wish it would flash, like when in battle chat. When you have battle chat and then someone's chatting with you, it needs to the thing needs to flash to alert me that someone's talking to me, or at least pop up or something. So we're definitely throwing in the Cluckadons. Uh, that's about it, honestly. Uh, probably actually Calamity comes out here because it's just too clunky to play. It doesn't do enough for me. It can win outright, sure, but it's not worth it. Uh. Let's see. Periwinkle's okay here, because it can double a lot of things. Like, double Crocosaur, double a lot of things is always nice. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really need to get rid of. Maybe the Ashwood Soloists are good, but not overly amazing here, because they have to attack, and most of this stuff can block it, so... Yeah, that should be fine, I think. I could side in some artifact removal. Let's up to one target constant. I guess I could side in these. They're okay, but... Maybe to go with those over Ashwood Soloists? Maybe a little less Root Father. This is better. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah, the the root father's good too, but like in the early game, if all I'm doing is cycling root fathers, it's not gonna do a lot for me. So that's why I cited those out. So just cited out my high end to go a little bit faster. The Ashwood Soloist is still good because it's gonna help me get resources early. But again, it needs to swing to get things and he has lots of blockers, early blockers, so most of the time it's just going to try to trade with early stuff anyways. It's not actually going to give me the resources I need. This does make the, the deck a little bit more clunky for playing um, 
Majesty and other stuff. I mean, I could have sighted out a Majesty as well, because I'm not really trying to go all in on it as much. So he should be going first. So, Carnosaurus is really amazing here. The problem is, I don't have the other wild resource that I need. Uh, he mulled the six already. I feel like I need to. I have nothing playable. Yeah, I need to. Ugh, this is worse. That's bad. And I guess I'll stay here. I guess I should have kept the opening hand, but... I had nothing playable. I mean, if I had drawn a resource, I might have, but... Yeah, I got a famous player. <laughs> I do all right. Hey, there we go. Um, having the turn two Carnosaurus is going to be good here. Really good. He doesn't seem to have any removal so far that I've seen uh, in his deck, so that that's definitely going to work in our favor. If he does have the bouncing removal, that's even better. Oh, that's pretty good. It's a nice, nice play, but hopefully Carnosaurus will just stall out the board state here for a good amount of time. This is one of those. This is why you're here, Carnosaurus. This is why you're here. This is your reason for living. This will be one of those situations, most likely, where we'll cycle Larch. Unless we draw. Um, I, mean, I guess I could have. Either one. I'm not going to swing here, anyways. Gain some life back. Yeah, the big thing is, is like if I can gain life past where he. and stabilize past where he's just top decking stuff and he just doesn't have board state to swing in, then I'm in a really good spot. Emio Bot, that's good. Replicas of a troop in your hand, put them in your deck so his deck gets more troops. Makes another war bot, worker bot there. Makes an electroid. Electroid's gonna be a little bit of an issue. It would be nice if eventually I can double this large. That would definitely put me in a good spot. Ooh, there's that Cluckadon. Um, I can play Cluckadon and target his Mechanist, or I can just take down this Electroid. I think I want to just take down the Electroid, honestly. Um, let's see, Electroid or Machinist? Machinist keeps dealing damage to me, but, event but he's just top deck. I think I just take down the Electroid here. Alright, let's do it. Take down Electroid. We gain tons of life because we're fighting here, so we'll gain four for him coming into play, then another two off the Carnosaurus. So I gain six life back. And that should do a pretty good job stabilizing things. I could could swing in with the Carnosaurus, but I want to keep gaining life off of it. Oh, that's an issue, though. No, that's an issue. All right. Well, hopefully I draw my artifact removal now. Or a really big drop, or... Well, I guess I don't really have anything to play the big drop with. Crocosaur is helpful. So we're going to actually cycle Larch here. Play Periwinkle or cycle. I think I just want to cycle a Larch and play the, the shard this turn. And we'll play Periwinkle next turn. Swing with Cluckadon by itself. we draw a resource, we can Crocosaur, and that's going to do a lot for us if we... Um, but, yeah, most likely we'll play Periwinkle, and then we'll get hopefully get the double Crocosaur going. Crocosaur will take care of his, uh, his, um, whatever it is, the, uh, War Hulk, which we're going to see soon. Let's see that thing hit the table pretty soon. He's 
Top deck and shards. He played his shard. He probably should have held on to it and just. Uh, and uh, he could have done that in my end step. Probably should have waited. Okay. Uh, I'm going to parry Winkle. I have a plenty of time to uh, play the Crocosaur next turn. I've been, I'm at 21 life, so I'm not really too afraid of this deck right now. Just keep swinging with Succulent Cluckadon and then Prairie Winkle. Take five. Not really that scared right now. So he, he has he's top deck mode. He has no removal for Prairie Winkle. I get double Crocosaur, and that should be game time basically. Plus the fighting is going to get me my life back anyways. I'm going to double fight, so I'm going to gain four life off of that double fight. And he just played another dude, so now I get to double fight properly. I get to actually quad fight here. So, I mean, that's going to gain me a ton of health. Yeah, that's... So there we go, double croc. Except, and we'll take those two, and then we'll take the other two. Yeah, Crocosaur is just stupid. That's another one you should probably pull out of your opponent's deck if you're uh, using the artifact that I've got in the reserves here. I don't see him coming back from this. He may be good gaming here. It looked really good for him on that Mold of Four, but... Yeah. It looked really good until like I was able to play Crocosaur. You need burns and yeah. <laughs> I mean <laughs> If you're playing this deck, you have to play Burn, and you should probably be playing uh, the other one. Um. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, you need to. Even in Arena, I would have Burns in this deck. He, he pretty much has to play him. Was that 5, 9, 10, 11, 12? He's got one turn. But still, I mean, if he's playing against me, he's either two, uh, he's either got two wins or three wins, so he has to be doing decently well today with this. Yeah. Top deck mode on aggro is, is not where you want to be. You're pretty much... It's like game time. He also needs to hold on to cards in his hand more, too. But, I mean, that's debatable, because you do need to get this champion power off more often than, like, I don't, really. Like, I can sit on my champion power, and it doesn't matter as much, you know? I don't want there to be too many legendaries. I think okay, so so honestly though, like with legendaries, I feel like